nerd dice. Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 83 in our series, Creator Ruby Gem, Nerd Dice. And so in this item, so we're pretty much putting on the finishing touches for this ability to use convenience methods issue. And if you look in the requirements that we wrote down, we pretty much have the um, the baseline for what we're going to put in our readme file. So a lot of this is going to be very similar in terms of the, uh, the blocks and examples we put into that readme there. So uh, similar to what we did in the other um, the last time we had with the the objects we're going to open a pull request now and this is issue number six Create the pull request. We'll let the um, checks are in progress. If we look at our files change here, we can see our diff, and that will give us the basis of what we need for our change log. So we'll we'll start here by doing adequate commenting of the code. So I'll move that into in progress. And um, some little bit I did in the last epic, I'll just kind of review through things. And then if uh, something significant comes up, I'll unpause and um, discuss it and then pause again. So in here, I provided some comments about method missing. I'll do the same thing for respond to missing and each of the methods in here because this is a um, metaprogramming situation. I want to make sure that the, the code is um, sufficiently commented. So one thing to note as I'm going through this, I just noticed that this return nil and less match data is never going to um, never going to matter because we're only ever calling this method on a string that already matches that um, backslash d d plus. So uh, I think I can just get rid of this and everything should still In fact, I can probably make this a one-liner. So that all that was unnecessary, an unnecessary check, because uh, in order to get to that point where you're parsing stuff out of the method name, it already needs to match that pattern uh, earlier on in the module. So we'll keep that change. You are correct, Rubocop. That is a useless assignment to a variable now. Hmm. 
you know, I'm still writing the comments. So uh, just to take a review of what I've done so far. So I'm just kind of going through each of these, um, providing information about the, uh, the purpose and some of the behavior and return values. Um, yeah, that would be the example of the, the empty comment there that I'll wind up taking care of, but that's um, where we are so far. So just kind of going through um, noting the um, providing some documentation and per kind of explaining the purpose of the various uh, methods as we go through this. So going through and commenting this, I noticed the uh, this default parameter underscore default is never used now. So we can just get rid of that. The only time get number of dice from method name is called is from parse method from method name and it only ever uses the one argument. So we can just get rid of that second argument altogether. It is extraneous. Our spec agrees. Rubocop agrees. Continue on in this. So just again going through defining the purpose of these, um, noting the um, any special caveats or things like that in there and um, going through we're about halfway done with the class now maybe a little no we're more than halfway done the class so I'll continue working on that so one more change that I want to make coming into this so I don't like this this error message it's too too vague we can provide better info here so move it out right now and then I'll in wind up interpolating this um, which will cause specs to fail which is okay but um, I want to provide the exact detail of the error so that somebody seeing this in the con in, in um, output knows what's going on. So yeah. Rubocop's fine with that, but our spec's gonna fail all over the place. Thirty two failures. So I'll pause and make all those modifications to the specs. So here's an interesting little problem. So I went, these strings appear to be identical. So I pasted them both into the console and it's showing them as equal. when I try to do this. And I don't understand why it's failing. Other than with backtrace. unless error message was already defined.
try that, see if that changes anything. Nope, still failing. I'll return that back to its previous state. Since changing the variable didn't help anything. So I'm going to just see if interpolating this as a regular expression works. I don't really want to do that, and I think Rubocop will not be happy. That does work. Rubocop actually doesn't care. So um, Kind of odd, but I'll apply it elsewhere and see if everything else works. And actually, before I apply this everywhere else, instead of adding all these three lines in here, I'm going to create a method in um, spec helper. that gives me that bonus integrity error message. So I've got this little method defined here, and I should be able to call it from here. Let me try that. It's passing. Let me see if now it doesn't require the interpolated regular expression. No, nope, still failing. We'll leave that as is. See whether Rubocop gets angry about me putting that directly in the spec helper. Both autocorrectable. Look at our didn't modify that. Anyway, spec helper just using slash and the indentation. Spec is still passing. I'll apply that pattern to the rest of the specs. All right, so I think I've replaced it everywhere. Let me see. If I track down every occurrence, ah, I missed one. Minus six. So this is total NDNN minus N. So this would be a good argument for why 
perhaps I should invest the effort in extracting out some of this RSpec stuff as regular expressions, but um, that's uh, or it's shared examples, not regular expressions. Um, but that gives me what I want. Go back to continuing the um, the, the last commenting part of convenience methods. All right, so I've got the convenience methods adequately commented. Now, let me continue down through the diff here. So this is all new. And then everything else, I believe, is a spec. I will go through and at least add a spec level comment to each of the specs as well. So just take a look at the, the level of commenting I'm providing. So I'm providing kind of a top level comment for high, at least so far these highest, lowest with advantage with the disadvantage, kind of providing a top level there. And then on the second describe block, um, adding a little comment there. I'll continue on. I've got my example of the role pattern. And I've got the spec level comments for the highest, lowest, and um, with, with the number of dice specified. So, so far we're from here to here, and we still need to do pluses and minuses. And then, um, the roll level then and then apply it all the total. So I've got my plus and minus comments for the spec. Now I'll do roll here. So I've got that one there. It was fairly straightforward. Now I need to take all of these roll ones and apply them to total, which I'll use a similar technique to what I did before where I copy into into a new window replace like that so I'll Do that with this one, and then I'll just apply it to all the others and unpause. All right, so I've got those top level comments applied to the total specs. The other thing I'm going to do is just add in a bullet point for all the roll ones that it returns a die a, a dice set object and for the total ones that it returns an integer and then for the total advantage disadvantage I'm going to note that it um, it calls it uh, roll dice and then total so I'll do that all right so I think I've finally got everything documented except for this add a comment here there. Okay. 
and let me make sure I didn't break any specs. Sure, I didn't upset the authorities. I think we're good. So, in addition to the commenting, we we made a couple of material changes to the code that I want to add to the commit message. But look at our git status. So we've modified a lot of files, but most of it is, almost all of it is commenting. Write the commit message. So I've got my commit message. I will sign it. And let's try pushing to the remote. So, pretty big commit. I will be astonished if I made it completely free from proofreading errors in all those comments. The um, the decision to not refactor our spec into shared examples is uh, has made its presence known. So it was extremely tedious to go through all those spec items and add comments and do the um, the ad adaptation to the new uh, bonus integrity error message. Well, we'll go back to. It looks like our action for the pull request has passed. Make sure that the, the latest commit is there. Committed 18 days ago. It is in ascending order. So we've got our passing action, go into the backlog. We can move commenting the code. I guess I should specify. We're done. So next episode, we'll take care of the readme and the change log, and then we'll go from there. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.